Painting clouds, hard. Painting foothills, hard. Painting bushes, really hard. But you know what? They don't have to be. I'm gonna show you three simple painting techniques using one of my favorite paint brushes, the Bob Ross foliage brush, and it's gonna make everything so much easier for you. Let's go. What is up all you awesome painting people? Wild coming at you from another hot Southern California day. If you need help with tips, tricks, tutorials, product reviews, anything to advance your painting adventures, do me a favor and hit that big red subscribe button down below. But we're gonna be talking about the Bob Ross foliage brush. I'm gonna show you three simple ways to paint, specifically how to easily do clouds, foothills, and bushes, which are common things people struggle with when they're doing landscape paintings. But this brush actually makes it really easy in any new painter. And yeah, new painter can dominate with this brush. So let's go up to the canvas and have a little bit of fun. Also, real quick, if you don't have a Bob Ross foliage brush, you can help me and use the links down below if you wanna get one. If they don't have one in your area, which is probably common, you can substitute out the foliage brush for a mop brush. I put some recommendations down below for your country or region. Take your foliage brush and we're just gonna put it right through some titanium white and just a little bit of bright red. We're gonna get a nice little pink base here to build some clouds. And we really wanna load this brush up. As you can see, I'm gonna turn it towards camera a little bit. This thing is full of paint and I like to pull it through in kind of two ways. You can either go flat so you get a small little ridge or if you wanna rotate it, you can get a round ridge. See how it's just round up there at the top? This allows for different techniques on our clouds, but remember that as we come up. Now my sun source is really high, so I'm just gonna put a little row of clouds in here, and I'm gonna start out with the flatter side, and I'm gonna hold down, and all I'm gonna do is just simply tap, then rotate my brush to get some bigger crowns coming up in here. And I'm just gonna kinda of pull this all the way around and across. Down here at our base, we're just gonna dissipate this down into our background here. Now all you do is just lightly tap the base and kind of pull it down a little bit into this blue background. And the longer you sit here, the more it's going to dissipate and disappear into that back. Now what you wanna do is kind of work in a little bit of a curve or angles or whatever you wanna call it to break up the shape of the cloud. If you dissipate it all, it's gonna have a straight line we want to add different dissipation levels so that way it gives it more of a 3D look. So for me, perhaps this cloud comes down like that, so it's gonna have a little more body. So let's soften this part here so that way you can actually see it. With just a few taps, we've got clouds that have already making beautiful shape. If you want a cool little trick, you can actually take your paintbrush and lay it a little flatter so more of these bristles are hitting and working and making this look more velvety or like it's dissipating a little bit more in the background. I mean, look how much more blue is just shining through right there. Now let's add a little bit of highlight by getting some white paint. This is just straight titanium white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to work just one corner of the brush so I have a little more control. You can work the flatter side like we showed earlier, but I'm gonna use the more rounded side because I wanna shape my light a little bit more. See how much paint is on that rounded corner side? Now let's go up here and apply some paint. Again, think about where your light source is. My sun is way up here. In fact, let's just put a sun up there to give us a little better indication because the light's gonna come down and catch. So let's start shaping some stuff. I'm gonna go right above where my pink is and just start tapping in lightly. Some shapes. Just like I did before, I'm just gonna velvet tap these down on the bottom just to get a little bit of shape before I work them in. Again, this is just an easy light touch. When you tap in your clouds using the Bob Ross foliage brush, you get really soft, pillowy clouds that you can shape with different colors. Now you can leave it here, or you can finish them off by using the two inch brush, by blending the bottom in just a tiny bit, cross blending the strokes, giving it a nice lift, and even out your strokes to have beautiful looking clouds. Of course, when you make clouds, you can make rows and rows and rows, as many clouds as you want, and it's super easy when you use a foliage brush or a mop brush. Just remember to tap in and follow the shape of a cloud and try to make it soft and pillowy because that's really gonna work to the benefit of this paintbrush here. When it comes to doing foothills, we wanna pick a dark color to start off with and we're gonna do the exact same technique as a cloud. We're gonna use more or less the corner, the round corner side of our 
foliage brush here and load it up with a lot of paint. Foothills are like clouds. You just wanna follow a roundish shape, but you wanna keep it connected. So I like to do shorter, punchier kind of pushes with my paintbrush. And I like to bend the bristles a lot, depending on how much definition I want to show up or how much I want to fade certain parts. But the nice thing about this is if you don't feel confident, you can go up and down numerous times on this plane till you get like a shape that you like or a velvety style or definition or faded bottom that you like. You can just slowly keep working this numerous, numerous, numerous ways. And that's what's so forgiving about this paintbrush. And that's why I like it so much. If you like to add multiple foothills or grassy plains, generally people like to break it up by making the bottom of your grassy plain or foothill a little bit softer. It looks like mist or light is kind of diffused between the layers, which really does help break it up. Now, this is a stylistic choice. You can leave those brash paint strokes in there from when you first created that foothill or grassy knoll. So it's completely up to you. If you really struggle putting in grass or foothills or a row of very distant trees, the Bob Ross foliage brush is a game changer. In fact, it's gonna save you so much time. And if you're really nervous about those things, this brush makes it easy. Cause again, all it is is softly tapping back and forth till you get a row of what you like. And trust me, everything will fall into place with this brush cause it's extremely forgiving. In this bottom left-hand corner, we're gonna travel back to the 1970s and put in some thick bush. Now, doing bushes is no different than making a cloud or doing foothills. We're gonna put a lot of paint in our brush and round it off with all of that dark color. To be honest, it's just the same color back here to save some time. When you put in a bush, think like a bush. You kinda need to go up and around and push this in. And you really wanna push and allow these bristles to bend bend them a lot because we're just putting in a basic shape. Now this is just a really big bush that's sitting down here in this corner because we're gonna reshape it when we put in highlights. So don't worry too much about it. Let's put a little low hanger over here too that kind of goes wide. Something just like that. Now when it comes to putting highlights on your bush here, there's a couple of ways. You can do the same thing we did with the cloud with rounding off the brush like we did before. But if we take our palette here, which is just cadmium yellow with just a tiny bit of sap green, I'm gonna come straight in on it. I hope this pulls up on the camera, but I'm just gonna pull the paint down straight. And then once I have a nice little row of paint, I'm just going to tap right in. And what you want is to have these little peaks here. Now you need a nice creamy paint here. And you know, to be honest, you're probably gonna need a lot of paint. In fact, I probably need more paint, which I'll refill in between shots here. Let's come in and let's just drop a couple of highlights where we think our sun is coming down again. Again, Mr. Sun is up there. So let's just tap right above. And as you can see, when you use a creamy paint, see how easy it sticks? I'm just gonna, let's see, come down and across, let that fade down into here. Maybe there's a dark spot there, that's fine. We'll, we'll come across over to here. And all I'm doing is just lightly pushing and just putting just a little bit of highlight in here. It looks like a bunch of little leaves and that's what you want. But again, like Bob always says, don't kill all your darks. And you can rotate your brush to have thicker spots or thinner spots. It's really up to you. Let's take some color and add it in here as well. Just to look like things are, got some 3D shape to it. The Bob Ross foliage brush has one gigantic advantage over the one inch and two inch brush. When you're making bushes, it's a lot easier to control the softness of those bushes with the foliage brush, which is huge for any new painter that's trying to build layers out there. Remember, layers equal depth in the painting. So using this brush to make mid-ground bushes is gonna be perfect because they're gonna be slightly soft. They're not gonna have a lot of detail in them. So when you put bushes in front of this with a one inch brush and add thick highlights, those are gonna be more detailed, which means you're building depth within your painting 
which is gonna be a lot easier for you, which I know a lot of new painters struggle with. Whether it's clouds, foothills, or grass, or bushes, the Bob Ross Foliage Brush, surprise I can still nail that word, is great and fantastic. And I do recommend it for any painter out there that wants to do landscape painting, because in my opinion, it's a little bit of a cheater brush. It's really good at kind of babying you into things until you build a little more confidence. And even if you're a veteran, I use it all the time just because that wide bloom it has makes it fantastic for so many different things. This is just the tip of the iceberg, but I find these to be the best three introductory ways of using that brush. Now, like I said, you wanna help me out? You can use the links down below to buy the brush. It helps support my channel, so thank you very much. And hey, while you're down there, leave me a cool comment. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. And if you need any other useful, you know, painting videos, how to use a particular product, you know what? Check out the videos over to the side because YouTube is gonna recommend some really cool videos for you. Recommend, recommend. There we go, I guess that works. I will see all of you awesome people later. Take care, and of course, peace.